Explaining magnetism isn't as easy as one might seem to simplify it. Sometimes to irreducibly simplify something is harder than explaining something that is extremely complex. Let's uh, take a look again at the hypertrochoid. Now we know that magnetism is extrapolated out as the hypertrochoid. I mean, I've uh, shown that to you underneath the ferrule cell, which is a true projection of magnetism. This is actually a genuine photographic image of a magnet, any magnet, whatever shape it is, it doesn't matter. Field pressure dynamics mediate itself out identical, regardless of shape or uh, actual uh, Gauss rating of a magnet. It extrapolates itself out as the hypertrochoid. What we have to add is that a magnet, by the way, is no different than a macro model of any atom. Every atom undergoes precession, the way that uh, a magnet uh, re releases force uh, it causes divergence and that uh, every action has equal opposite reaction. That reaction is uh, inverse polarity uh, reciprocation. Uh, and the precession of either the atomic or the macro model of the magnet, which a magnet is nothing other than field incommensurability. You have aligned atomic domains. A magnet pre-magnetization and post-magnetization is obviously so quantitatively identical. The only thing that has changed is field coherency. Okay. Now, most people don't know this, but it is very simplex fact to anybody that's uh, you know has a scientific mind that a magnet does not have poles. As I've already shown you, Mother Nature only draws lines in one way. Uh, Mother Nature does not draw lines like we draw lines. We we draw lines. Well, actually, I saved that one. Here we go. Um, edit tools, annotate line. We draw lines this way. Mother Nature does not know how to make a line that way. Every action is equal and opposite reaction. This is polarity. Okay. Now let's uh, annotate a uh, a rectangle here. Okay. Let's just say this is a magnet and this is a north pole and the south pole. We think, well, here's the north pole. We're going to cut it right along the center here, and then we're going to have uh, we're going to have uh, two different. Uh, we're going to cut the poles apart. Most people don't know this. I mean, like a piece of salami, if you're able to cut it a thousand million times, which of course they're ceramic, neodymium, iron, borons. It doesn't matter whether it's a samarium cobalt or a neodymium iron boron, it doesn't matter what sort of magnet it is, it is impossible to separate out the poles. I mean, it is absolutely impossible. Here we'll make a, a line dividing the middle of a magnet. Okay, here's the north pole, here's the south pole. Now, a magnet does not have poles. It has projections inverse to counterspace, the non-Euclidean point at which um, the loss of inertia occurs, and that loss of inertia is what we denotate as magnetism. Like I said, there's only one field and four field modalities. There's no such thing as dielectricity versus magnetism versus electricity versus gravity. I mean, it's absolutely no different than uh, trying to say that steam is one thing, water is another, and uh, ice is another thing altogether. I mean, it's an absolute absurdity. Humanity suffers under an incredible delusion that uh, we're trying to unify uh, four principles of uh, field theory, and, and they've been united the entire time. We're just looking at one thing with four different faces. Uh, electricity obviously has a dielectric and a magnetic component, as necessitatively is the case. Phi times psi, Q and Planck equals electrification. Electricity is nothing other than a transverse uh, ether uh, field modality of the combination of dielectricity and magnetism, just as electromagnetic radiation or what we I refer to as light is nothing other than a transverse, whether it is uh, linear or, uh, or circular uh, perturbation, is nothing other than a, a longitudinal dielectric perturbation with transverse electrical and magnetic modalities that we denotate as frequency and amplitude, wavelength. Um, so what is magnetism? What is field incommensurability? We know that the Lamour frequency of simplex magnetic precession is 42.49 megahertz per Tesla in degrees of geomagnetic ratio. This occurs on the macro scale and on the micro scale. This frequency, there are several frequencies, this is the median frequency. Um, it has to be known uh, for uh, MRI imaging, it's known as the Lamour frequency. 
We said every action is equal and opposite reaction. So how do we extrapolate out? You have to imagine the hypertrochoid in three dimensions, okay? Mother Nature does not know how to make a line like human beings make a line. This is how Mother Nature draws a line. There are no straight lines in the universe. It's like, well, you're drawing a curved line. You're drawing a circle right now, and it's extrapolating out a hypertrochoid. You're correct. That's because there is not one single straight line in the entire universe. All lines in the universe, while seemingly infinitely long and appearingly straight, all of them are curved linear. There is not one single straight line in the entire cosmos. Even if you think you can draw a straight line on a piece of paper, ultimately looked at uh, from a, a galactic scale, it is still curved. <laughs> so, Mother Nature can't draw a straight line any more than you can draw a straight line. Now here you see we have the start of a hypertrochoidal formation. As I buck this way, the loss of inertia i.e. is expressed as magnetism. Loss of inertia magnetism is nothing other than the extrapolation of the loss of inertia. So here we have the hypertrochoidal formation. But now you have to extrapolate this out in your mind in a three-dimensional fashion. So here we're expressing out both the physical boundary of the magnet. Here is the hypertrochoid. Now I'm sure you've probably seen that hypertrochoidal formation before. It occurs everywhere in nature. And here we go. Here's a sunflower. This is the only way the lowest pressure mediation extrapolation of a force divergence. It's also the way things grow in nature. Shells, spirals, it actually occurs at a ratio of 1 to 5. Now magnetism is a two-dimensional, excuse me, a three-dimensional projection of a two-dimensional loss of inertia. If we extrapolate this out in full, magnetism is nothing other than the hypothetical uh, uh, Henri Poincaré disk model of hyperbolic geometry for the extrapolation of stereographic projections of a two-dimensional divergence. Here we have the two-dimensional divergence on the flat plane and here we have it extrapolated out on the two-dimensional plane. Here we have it extrapolated out on the three-dimensional sphere. Now all we have to do is add precession and reciprocation and actually mirror this upside down and oh, voila! There we have magnetism. So what is magnetism? If you break it apart like you used to do back in school, well, what's a big word? Well, let's break the word apart. Magnetism is divinely simplex. You think I'm making it complex? I'm not. Magnetism or the magnet. Remember, a magnet is nothing other than a macro model of uh, an atomic uh, precession. Like I said, 100% of the visible universe, this cannot be disputed by anybody on Earth, is held up by magnetism, okay? 100% of the visible universe. So that which gives a volume to every atoms in picometers and radius obviously also is magnetism. So what is magnetism? It is literally the stereographic projection of the loss of inertia, that field divergence that can only be expressed as the projective geometry from a non-Euclidean inertia point as a uh, reciprocating processional hyperboloid that can only be extrapolated out in a hypertrochoidal force divergence pattern. This discovery is copyright mine of uh, the final summation of it of I think uh, April of last year. Um, it's in the third edition, and of course to go into great detail in the fourth edition, I'll have to go into great detail in it in the fifth edition. But this is the Hanley Poincaré. Now Hanley Poincaré had uh, no connection of this to magnetism. He was a brilliant mathematician and theorist, so he never um, actually uh, equated this with magnetism, but he actually, you know, in uh, uh, extrapolating through his mind non-Euclidean geometry and uh, three-dimensional projections, stereographic projections, of, uh, of a two-dimensional uh, point divergence, he extrapolated out this uh, Hanley Poincaré disk model. Little did he know that this uh, projective uh, holographic uh, disk model, a stereographic projection of a two-dimensional loss of inertia, is that which is magnetism, which holds up and uh, gives a definition to 100% of the visible universe. Here you see it right here. Now all you have to do is extrapolate that out in three dimensions. I hope you know what a toroid is, a torus or a toroid. And all of this can be seen underneath the ferro cell. And I can go into detail on this. This is all in the third edition of my book. But you are looking at real magnetism here. These are not computer generations. They're not you know, they're very colorful, but it's just the color of the LED light, okay? You're not 
Those are actually multiple magnets that are interfering with each other. These are actual photographs of a magnetism. Now here you see a magnet uh, either pole. You see the, the uh, dish-shaped con, uh, concave uh, uh, convergence patterns of uh, centripetal, not centrifugal. These projections outwards are centrifugal, inwards are centripetal. This is literally like a uh, two toilets, uh, two magical toilets that are connected. That are one's flushing from one side to the other, and the other one is uh, swallowing up the. Uh, it's, it, it's it actually it's incredibly simplex, but describing it and denotating it to people uh, boggles their minds. It's actually nothing other than field pressure mediation, and field pressure mediation. Um, by the two most simplex principles in the universe, dielectricity and magnetism, can only be expressed this way. Now here's a beautiful image. I didn't take this one. I took the rest of these up here. A beautiful image um, of magnetism. Okay, This is not computer generated. This is a, a pure, hardcore just photograph. No manipulation, nothing. It's red light, obviously. But this uh, hypertrochoidal formation, i.e. the spirograph, is literally a magnetism mediate, mediating out its uh, divergent and convergent uh, reciprocations from one side to the other. Now, a magnet does not have poles. As I've already told you, you need to think about this. Mother Nature only knows one way to draw a line, not like humans draw a line. A magnet does not have poles. You can take a magnet and cut it vertically a million, million times, and the very topmost slice... Uh, even if it's a micron thin, we'll have a quote-unquote north pole and a quote-unquote south pole. So it is absolutely in impossible to separate out one pole from the other. It doesn't exist. Polarity doesn't exist. When we're talking about polarity, what we're really referring to, uh, but we don't know because we're stupid humans, is the inverse of non-Euclidean geometry, i.e. counter space, non-dimensional inertia, i.e. the ether. Now, uh, current quantum mechanics is so stupid that they have uh, the biggest evil word, like screaming Satan inside of a church, which would be heresy, an equal heretical word in quantum mechanics is the word ether. But uh, quantum mechanics, since it's based upon phenomena, it's nothing other than corrupt atomism, cannot reject the ether. So what they've done is they've renamed it. So now quantum, which knows it cannot get by without the ether, has renamed it uh, quantum fluid. Now, I don't care if they call it quantum fluid or not. They're not talking about anything other than the ether. So, <laughs> even quantum mechanics must confess and admit to the ether because all fields are not particles. Okay, And the entire cosmos, visible and invisible, are fields. And fields are not particles. But that is a huge problem for quantum because quanta, quantity, particles, phenomena. Fields are not phenomena. Okay, now here's the ferro cell. I'm so happy you've discovered this after I had a revelation about the formula for magnetic uh, divergence and convergence, and it's, it's an extremely simple formula. It looks kind of complex, but I mean not very complex, but this is the only way that magnetism can express itself. Centrifugal, centripetal, uh, divergence, convergence introduce the Lamour frequency of precession, and you have geomagnetic precession, and therefore you're also... Uh, necessitatively reduced to the fact that uh, a magnet and magnetism from macro scale on the atomic scale or on the, mac uh, on the, from the micro scale to the macro scale is a geomagnetic precession which can only be extrapolated out as a reciprocating precessional hyperbola. There is no other way for magnetism to express itself. This is irreducibly impossible to refute. There is absolutely not one single person on this earth that you will ever find, and I don't state this lightly, there is no single person on this earth, or multiple people on this earth, that you will ever find that will ever be able to refute this. It is absolutely 100% impossible. I have all the evidence in the world for it, and uh, if I die next year from a heart attack or a stroke, I mean, I will be happy at this point, you know, knowing that I'm the first person in the world to figure out how magnetism works, what it is, because it is simplicity personified. However simple you thought field theory was, or what magnetism is or is not, if you thought that, and you know, the best of us, the brightest minds thought, have uh, concluded for eons now that magnetism must be divinely simple. But it is so much more simple than even they thought or I thought for so many years that is absolutely unbelievable. Magnetism is extremely simple. Explaining it, however, is not simplex. <laughs> but, but it is extremely simple. 
It is a reciprocating processional hyperboloid and is nothing other than simplex subpressure dynamics. Thank you.